YouTubers, welcome to my channel. So welcome to part two of my Thomas video. Now, once again, please bear with me. I told you we had to shoot this spontaneously and on a whim, we could not get our Zoom to work. So I am filming Thomas and I speaking on his phone and me on my computer through uh, FaceTime. So it is not the best, best quality as I would like it to be. But nevertheless, I have put up some subtitles for for you video. and not only yeah. that but I'm going to be able to uh, incorporate your answers to your questions in a third video number three number three <laughs> so I will get that up to you in a few days but for now go ahead and watch part two of my conversation with Thomas Marco okay so you never got the invitation she sent me for a fitting she Is sent you for a fitting Oh, okay. She sent you for a fitting. Yeah, well, I went went to Beverly Hills and got a fitting. She called me and asked, asked for my shoe size, and I thought I was going. Then the photograph thing happened. You know about that. Did she know the photographer was going to be there to take the pictures of you? This photographer, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of suing this guy. I'm probably going to be in court in about two or three weeks. I'm, I've been still trying to sue. Coleman Rayner for this because they went to babe uh -huh. that, that would be some answer to you convince your dad to let us take photographs to improve his image because every shot of me down here was carrying beer bottles and so forth I don't drink mm -hmm. but, but I took beer, beer to the guards at the guard gate when I come, come mm -hmm. through it. I see but all these photographs of me buying things like gas I did a close up of my hand with gas I close up of my hand with three with three bottles of beer so they said they were going to clean up my image or mm -hmm. make me look better then later well then the pictures came out and of course all hell broke loose and I, I, tr I trusted her because she trusted them and she said, they're going to make you look good. They're so helpful. Met this guy, and he said, don't worry. I've done this for hundreds of people. Made them look good. You'll be really happy. These will all be candid photographs, he said. Well, as it turned out, they weren't candid photographs at all. So there were shots of him walking into the thing. First of, first of all, I showed him I showed him a place. I, I go at a restaurant where I, where I used to go with my computer. And I'd set up that restaurant to do my little things with my computer. And I said, that'd be a good place because that, that's where I go. He said, no, no, I want you to go to the computer cafe. And when I was in the computer cafe, he walked in right behind me, started taking pictures and telling me to move left, move right, get out of the way. Well, this is not candid. There's an article that came out in the Daily Beast. Anyone can go to the Daily Beast, look up that, that article where Coleman Rayner tries to wreck the wedding. It, in that in that article, it's a reporter interviewing Coleman. Coleman is telling exactly what everybody was saying in the room. There were some incredible people in that room. They were laughing about it, having a good time. I want everyone to go read that article. Once, if, once you've read it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. You think perhaps Megan was working with him because he still takes pictures of her to this day, I believe. Uh, I, that's the other thing. So why, I what's the connection between Megan and, and Coleman Rayner? I, I, I would love to know, but I, I've been told by, by some people, some photographers, that he had been wor working with them before he worked with me, before he took my photographs. Do you think Megan had asked him to contact you or Samantha to have you agree to these photos? I think it's possible, but I can't prove it. In hindsight, I think they decided they didn't want me at the wedding. Uh, in high, hindsight, I think I think she would have preferred to walk down the aisle herself. When Charles volunteered to walk her down the aisle, she said, "I'll meet you halfway." She wanted to walk by herself. Yeah. I can't accuse her. I can only guess. But um, but there, there's enough there's enough there to prove that, uh, that certainly prove that they weren't candid photographs. When uh, the pictures did come out. Uh, I had a heart attack that night. You had when you saw the pictures. That's what caused you to have the heart attack. You think perhaps that caused me to have my first heart attack, and that, that put me in the hospital for two and a half days in Mexico. I thought that was okay. After two and a half days, they stabilized me. 
and I thought I was okay. Uh, so when I got out of the hospital, then I drove up to Los Angeles. It was Mother's Day. I was taking flowers to Doria's house. Saying our relationship was good all the way through to that point. And uh, uh, when I came out after dropping the flowers off, there's like 11 photographers across the street catching pictures of me. And then they followed me all the way back down the, the five, all the way back down to the Mexican border. Uh, about two days before the wedding, uh, I had a massive heart attack. At that point, I uh, had that stents put in. That's the last time I talked to Megan and her. Was that uh, day when you had your second heart attack, or when you had the second, or when you had the stents put in? After, after my procedure, right. I was in the hospital, and I, I think they called me. Every, every, at that point, everybody thought I was still in this house. Kinds of embassies, the British embassy, everybody's running around thinking that I was holding up in this house. I was you know, laying on a bed in, uh, in Chula Vista on the other side of the border. Finally, my the, the, care, the guy that I have taken care of this house called and said, Thomas said, well, he's looking for you. And I said, I'm in the hospital, I'm here. Eventually, they called me that evening. I had to tell him I can't go to the wedding. Then Harry said to me, if you listen to me, this would never happen to you. His, his, his words to me at the beginning of that year were, Never talk to the press, never talk to anybody. If you're approached by hundreds of guys all, all the time, eventually you don't talk to me. At that point, I said to him, it's too bad I didn't die. You guys could pretend I was dead. And I pretend you're sad. And then I hung up on him. Yeah. I haven't heard from him since. We haven't talked since. What was it that she said during the Oprah interview about asking you if you spoke to the reporters? You didn't want to tell her that you did, but you also wanted your image to be... Well, Rainer, Rainer said to me, because when the pictures came out, I called him up and said, what the hell is going on? He said, just deny it. The news changes every day. Don't worry, it'll go away in one day. Well, of course, it didn't go away. And he knew it, and then it, on his Facebook account, he was he was bragging about every picture every day. Wow. He was bragging. Mm -hmm. Yes. He set you up, clearly. He set yes. you up. Yes. What? But who had something to gain from you being set up? They did. They made a fortune on the photograph. They made a fortune, and also Macon had an excuse to not have you come to the wedding. Right. And, and that was another thing, too, because when it was said that I was going to go to the wedding before this, I said, I'd like to make a little speech. I, I've been writing a little speech. And yeah. Harry said, that you might want to talk to Megan about that. I think she wants to make a speech. And I said, well, I wanted to make a little speech. Yeah. Uh, that might have been one thing that shut it down. I'm not sure. I don't know. Big question marks down there. The bottom line is that they didn't make a second phone call to see if I was living or dead. They never spoke to me again. What, would you would you treat your, your father that way? Absolutely you not. Absolutely uh, not. And I don't care that you did have pictures taken. That's not an excuse to never speak to your father again. Because they never sent anyone to help you like they did Doria. Like you were exactly. thrown out to the wolves. Yes, there were people literally rented a porch two, two, two houses away from me on the left side and two houses away from me on the right side with cameras trained to my doors when I come out to get in my car every day, every day. 24-7, those, those cameras were aimed at my house. And that's because she denied you support. So what are you supposed to do? You're trying to navigate this, right, in public. Right. But they're not doing anything to help you. And I can't get over the fact that I think it was a setup to not include you because of your relationship with your, your children, Thomas. And I hope it comes out in court, the truth. I do. Well, the, uh, the, the relationship with, uh, with my, my first two children uh, uh, has, has been accepted, I think, by the British now. And, and they, they understand it more now. Yeah. Uh, that's Megan's fault because she's told so many lies. She's upset so many with the royals that no one has messed up the royals as much as she has. It's, it's sad that it's but an she's American. A, the queen, you know, she's attacking a 95 year old woman and, and denying that 95 year old woman the right to see her grandchildren. Yeah, and Great you, grandchildren. yeah, and you. Everyone, no one gets to see the child, not even the public, really. <laughs> 
some a lot of people doubt that there's a girl. They well, don't know. That what do you believe about the the theories or, or the uh, rumors about her having a surrogate and not really having the children physically? You know, did she ever have female issues about you know having children someday or? Um, well, the, the bottom line, I know for a fact that, that she had frozen her eggs and had planned to come back, and she had come back, across. she had flown back to get her eggs. I'm, I'm assuming she, she had Archie. Physically, she know. had Archie herself with her frozen eggs, maybe? I'm, I'm guessing that, yeah. It's yeah. a common thing yeah. for women to do that, though. Yeah. It's a smart thing. It's that. very smart. Yes. I mean, yeah, no one's knocking that at all. I wish I had done it. <laughs> Uh, why did Megan come to live with you in middle school? Why did she not live with Doria anymore? Uh, I'm not sure. We we, we, we were get we got we got along very well. Uh, on weekends, I would take her to her dance classes and her drama classes. Her school was on my side of town. That was another reason. Yeah. So she wasn't uh, having any issues with Doria or. Did, you know, what did Doria not? Was she not able to watch her? What like what? What was their relationship like to leave living with her well, mother? They got along well too. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that their relationship is bad. I'm just saying that uh, my relationship with with Megan was very good and 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 very convenient. We had similar likes, I guess. I mean, I, Saturdays and certain weekends, we we go out and get. Old old nineteen thirty six dance movies because she wanted to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I I take her and her girlfriends and we go miniature golf and stuff like that on weekends. We just, we'd always do something good, and we'd even go to Sizzler sometimes. Mm -hmm. Did you only have yeah. a salad? <laughs> yeah, right. So, Tell uh, me what. What did you eat when you went to Sizzler, Thomas? What did you have? What kind of meal? We had, we had it all. You had it all? We had it all. Did you have a steak, and, Thomas? I bet and, you had a and, steak. And the ice cream on the way. Oh, and you even had dessert. Yeah, you always get it all. So the stories uh, about growing uh, up poor, uh, that's uh, not true. No, oh, we went to Yamashiro's. I don't know, I don't know if you know Hollywood. We went to Yamashiro's. Oh, we yeah. went to... Uh, at, at, at that time, there was Hamburger Hamlet up there on the boulevard. There was, there was a lot of great restaurants up in Hollywood, and that's mm -hmm. where we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never have any, any quarters or pennies together to do this. Yeah. That's just not true. And the thing about her, 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 her car, none of that's true. So here, so here Harry is thinking he didn't rescue the young girl from the ghetto, and she's I not. And she's a pretty well-off middle-class girl, and he thinks he's rescued a girl who's had nothing. That's right. I think you're right. But, you know, the school she went to, uh, in that girl in high school, is very well mixed. I mean, it's, it's Hispanics, Armenians, it's black kids, it's white kids, it's, uh, it's a very good mix of every, everybody. And there, there's no hostilities there, there's no... There's mm -hmm. no, no problems there at all, ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Thomas, why did you and Doria divorce? Uh, some of that's my fault. Mm -hmm. um, because my hours were like 15 and 16 hour days. Also, at that, in those days, I was also doing a lot of location work. Mm -hmm. I'd gone for a week. Or two weeks. That that was that was my my bad. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and she, in, in her case, she would have some. A lot of her friends from up north. She went to college up north in California. Uh, we drifted apart that way. Basically, we drifted apart. Because you were always yeah. working and not home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, actually, like I said, once we once we separated and, and we. We both moved into the city. We had wound up spending more time together then mm -hmm. than when we married. Up until Doria and Megan went up to, or Doria went to see Megan up in, in Canada uh, that last time. Or Doria and I got along fine. I, when I when I would come up to Los Angeles from down here, well, she she put me up for the night. 
I wake up in the morning, she would have made me breakfast and, and gone to work somewhere. You were supposed to go to Canada to meet with them time to show your support and everything, take pictures, which, you know, they said that was a no-no. I don't know why, but <laughs> you're her dad, yeah. but she doesn't want to take pictures yeah. with you. Time you had a good relationship with Dorian, and then it just went. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 like I said, up, and, up until that point, uh, she had a boyfriend, Dory had a boyfriend, you know, uh, and uh, that wasn't a problem either. I mean, sometimes I'd come and she, she'd always let me crash at the house. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and sometimes she'd walk in and it was, was, wasn't a problem, never a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we got along very well up to that point. You're really confused about why you're never... You're not talking with your daughter right now. Like, you just don't even get the reason. Because I know what Oprah said. She said that you portrayed her trust. Like, how? Well, I mean, there's another thing. I mean, the, Dory, uh, Megan said, if only I had gotten in the car. And apparently they had sent a car to pick me up to take me to the airport is what they were saying. And at that point, I was in a hospital bed. Mm-hmm. But, so, but this guy named Sarge, who apparently is a friend of, uh, of Harry, uh, had come to pick me up and take me up to Los Angeles. Um, and, but he said, I refuse to get in the car. I refuse. They opened the door and I refused to get in the car. I was laying in a hospital bed. <laughs> right. So another so, lie. So this guy Sarge. Mm -hmm. Just full of it because he never saw me. He doesn't know what I look like. He probably knows what I look like, but he never opened the car door for me. I wasn't there to have the car open for me. Right, right. So, so you were supposed to go to. So, well, did you ever get an invitation to the wedding? I never got an invitation, and I asked her about it. I said, "Well, I, what happened? I, I, I do I get an invitation?" I said, "Where's my invitation?" She said, "Maybe it got lost in the mail." Which <laughs> but uh, another thing that bothered me about her, we, we talked about, I talked about it earlier. I said, if, if we're not going to invite all these people, have a parchment made up with, with, a, with a crown on it and so forth. And mm -hmm. say, we're so sorry, that we're, we want to announce our wedding and we're so sorry we can't invite everyone, but please share with us this day. And, and, and enjoy the parchment. It would have gone on everybody's wall for life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't have an idea. She didn't like that idea. So. Wow. Wow. So, so sorry that your relationship is gone south with your daughter. And I think, Mr. Markle, you are a wonderful man. I really do. And I feel so well, sorry for you and your family. I'm worried, I'm worried about this book that Harry apparently is Yeah. With. And I think it's going to be really damaging towards Camilla. What do you think about Charles and Camilla? I think, I think, they, I think they, were late, they were a relationship long before Diana. They just, they just brought the relationship back together again. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, uh, she seems to be serving well now and being appreciated by the public. Apparently, they've had a, they've had a long love story. Yeah, they have. Um, I'm learning all about this this new love story between Charles and Camilla now. So yeah, yeah. Did you like yeah. Diana? Uh, well, I, I I guess. I mean, I, I didn't really know who much uh, about it. About. Yeah, that's just not a thing we Americans were much invested in. That's what I think. But that reminds me, Megan said that she didn't even know Harry or the royal family. How Do you believe that? I don't know if that's true or not. But here again, I, I think I think the connections uh, uh, were made in the Soho Clubs. Uh, oh, that's think, right. Now, what about the Soho Clubs? Like, what do you know well, about the Soho Clubs? I, I, I know about as much as you do about them. I know that you got to be rich people to be there, and it, it's it's really high end people and uh, uh, kind of a, a somewhat snooty place to hang out. With. You know, you got to be a money if you're there. And she became a part of that, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And 
know, there, there are all kinds of stories floating around about her now that, um, about her, her and the boats and the island and all that stuff as well, too. And I, I don't know for sure. Yeah. Um, but. So this is what I want to say, and we can, we can wrap it up here, Thomas. And I think that you speaking to me and speaking to people, had Megan just given you the security and the support around the press, you would not speak to anyone. You wouldn't speak to, to me. You wouldn't have spoken to anybody. But you just were put well, into this position. I, 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 I might not have been as open. With exactly. You, you would not have been as open. But because yeah, I, she's I, not talking with you, what choice do you have? And Well, my, my deal was, and what I said I do, is that I would... Uh, I would do a story for the paper and wait 30 days. If they didn't get in touch with me mm -hmm. 30 days, I'd do another story. And that's what I did it pretty much. Yeah. So, um, I, 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 uh, I, I've been offered a chance to sue and see my grandchildren, but I don't want to see them under, the, under those conditions. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, <sighs> and as, as a matter of fact, I, I went to see my great-grandchild, uh, Tom's Tom's grand Tom's grandchild, my mm -hmm. son Tom's. Hi, so you'll you'll hold on to the relationship you have with your your other children, and yes. that's what you'll have, yeah. Yep. And I, I I hope one day you get to see your grandchildren from your daughter Megan, but in children. I children. I I want I I hope that they get they they get to go back to the worlds. I I, I think they're being denied. Uh, certain rights. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. if if they wind up going to school here, and apparent, apparently now Archie goes to preschool here, uh, which means he probably has a couple guards on him all day long. Yeah. Uh, and I I just think they they'd fit in better, and they're being denied their rights. Yeah, it's unfortunate. By Harry. Do you think, do you think the marriage will last? Okay, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, part two of my conversation with Thomas Markle. I will have a third part and I will incorporate the answers to some of your questions. I may be able to get a few of your questions still in if you send them to me right away. I can't promise, but I'll do my best. Okay, you guys, thanks for watching. Bye.